Hello, and, and welcome, welcome to, to the Book Doctor's YouTube channel. What's up? Today we are talking about the deadly silence of literary Ooh. agents and editors. Silence like death. Yeah. Like a, like a funeral parlor, like a morgue. You know, when you send your, you got it all ready, you've had your beta readers, you send it off either to an, an agent you don't know, or sometimes an agent says, oh, let me see your stuff, and you send it to him, and you're like, oh, right. I got an agent, or an editor at a publishing house. And then, silence. It's like silence of the lamb, silence. Nothing. 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 And you wait, and it's a week. At first, it's a day. Right. Because you're, uh, me, I always expect immediately. An immediate like, answer. Like, they're waiting for me. Like, yeah. Has, has David Sterry's thing come in yet? Yeah. Hey, it's Mr. Sterry's thing. Oh, my God. Like that's, yeah. what, that's in my brain. That's what's going on at the agent or the editor's house. A day goes by, two days go by, a week goes by, and you think, oh, a I, month. I, I should call them. Should I? Do I email them? Should I go out and reach out to them on Twitter or Instagram, or should I go to their house maybe or find their their offices? I would say on a consultation at least once a week, someone says, "I haven't heard from the agent <laughs> in two years." years they've been years. waiting. Years. Okay? So we want to go through... Ooh, look that at that. Good, I the did earth a nice moved. bang. The earth moved. Um, we want to go through yeah. what it means yes. when you don't hear from an agent. Radio so silence. Let's start with the... You send in a query to an agent or editor. Yeah. Doesn't matter yeah. here. Agent or editor who you don't know. Yes. Blind. Blind. And you hear nothing. Right. And you may have sent it to an actual agent's email address, or you might have done a form on a computer, yes, right? Yes, yes, where you have to fill your name in, yeah. your email So address. let's talk about the form. For most agencies, the form is not read by the agent you sent it to. Almost certainly won't be. So it's either read or not read, this is not read often, by a junior employee who's going to decide whether or not it's worthwhile to send this on to someone else. So in fact, you could be being ignored by someone who's 19 and is trying to grow a mustache and can't. Yes, that is true. puberty hasn't quite kicked in yet. Or you may just be not read, period, because no one has time to read all the queries coming into the inbox. There's a regular slush pile and then there's the like compost Mm. nuclear sludge pile that yeah. nothing ever crawls out right that's where you probably will right. end up okay so those are, so that's the scenario for the for the form the form then we get to the agent and or editor and you don't know this person and you've sent in a query and you hear no response so the number one likelihood is that the person simply has Hasn't not read looked at it yet. not looked at it or read and might not ever. Yes. Unless there is proper follow up, which we will get to in a moment. Okay. Not Don't read... assume they haven't read it and hate it. Yes. Assume first that they have not even looked at it. That they have read it and hated it. You said they haven't read it and hated it. Don't assume that they've read it and hated it. Yes. Assume they haven't even looked at it. Correct. Yes. Okay. Now let's say you have a connection to the agent or the editor. Maybe you met them at a writer's conference. Maybe they even asked for you to send your stuff. Or a referral. referral. Somebody in your writer's group said, ooh, I like this, send it to my agent, send it to my editor. Yeah, so you send it in, you hear nothing, nothing. What should you assume, David? They haven't even read it. They haven't even read it. Do they hate it? No, how could they? They haven't even read it. I haven't even read it yet. Because the likelihood is if they read it and hated it, they would have sent you a form letter yeah. that said, thank you, I am not interested in this. So probably have not read it. Now, it is possible that they read it and had more complicated feelings about it. Maybe they feel bad. We all get complicated feelings. Yes. Maybe they feel bad Sometimes because they bad. didn't respond right away, and now it's a month later, and they and still haven't responded. They met you, and you had a nice conversation, or right. you're referred by somebody who's they're connected with. Maybe they feel a bit guilty about Even the situation. Even the jaded, most hard bitten of us among us, right, will actually uh, 
you know, sometimes feel these pangs of, oh God, I don't want to write. Who wants to write a letter right. that says, I've, even though this is really good, <laughs> off because we're not interested. Okay, and here's another scenario that happened to me all the time when I was an agent. I got something that I was interested in, but it wasn't quite where it needed to be. And it required me to sit down and construct a letter saying what I would need, which takes a ton of time. And so what would I do? I just wouldn't write it. Okay, so that's so another you might be scenario. being ignored by someone who actually can grow a mustache Female or male, I don't say any gender right. based here, but someone who's a player and could make your dreams come true. You could be getting ignored by them. Now, let's say someone actually asked you for your material. Right. Okay, they want a proposal or a manuscript, and you are so excited because they, they asked they ask for it. Please, I want you. And then you send it and you hear nothing. You, and you, this may even happen when you've signed with an agent. This Even also then. happens. The yeah. agent says, I'm going to take you on as my client. You're like, yeah. hallelujah, praise, praise the gods, all the gods. And you send them your stuff and maybe even send them a fruit basket. Yep. And you hear nothing. What should you assume, David? I haven't even looked at it. I haven't, I haven't thought about you at, at all. It. You're not the center of their world somehow. How did that happen? I don't know. That you're not at the epicenter of their dreams and their yeah. universe, but you're not. Let's say you sent them a 75,000 word novel, which is going to take them 10 hours to read. That's fast too. Tell me when someone who has manuscripts piled this high, now possibly kids in the background, all kinds of other stuff going on, has 10 hours. Wait a minute, and they've got a whole stack of clients. Clients who are waiting, who are actually making money for them. Yeah. Who want their attention. Yeah. So that material is probably sitting unread. You know, the stack of, they don't even have stacks, but let's imagine a, f a file. Yes. That's so crammed with emails, it's bursting out. And you're the one that's close to bursting out of it. You're at the very bottom, at the end of all of it. There's all these things that the, the agent considers more important than your email. That's where you are probably. Yeah, exactly. It's not a rosy okay. picture we're painting. <laughs> Next scenario. They started to read it. Right. Maybe they were intrigued by some parts of it. They have to write a letter saying, again, what they like, what they don't like. It's going to take a really long time. It slips back into the backlog of emails. they're not getting paid to write the letter. Or let's say they read it and they do want to reject it. And they met you and they liked you. Yes. And then they have to figure out how to write a nice, nice letter. letter. And they have to tell you what's wrong with the book and why they're not taking Checking it on. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now that is actually does happen, but I want to register that that is a Tiny small possibility of the pie. Yeah. As opposed to the not reading part That's of the pie. That's most of the pie. So now we get into the old follow-up. What is to be done? What is to be done? How do you find out? Now, I want to go back to the query of the people you don't know for a second. Yeah. If you sent out 20, 40, 100 query letters and you get no response, that actually does not require follow-up. And I'll you are you, getting some valuable information. You're getting valuable information. You have not been able to pique anyone's interest. And following up is actually probably going to be more harmful than helpful. And what you need to do is rewrite that query letter. Yes. Possibly with some help from some trained professionals. Yes. Yeah. So that is one scenario. Now, let's say you are getting no follow-up from someone you have, I mean, no response from someone you have a connection to. That is where it requires a follow-up. And we like to say two weeks. You don't wanna wait much longer than two weeks, then you just fall back so far and it doesn't, you don't look professional because you're not following up on your own work. And probably not before two weeks, honestly. 
Like some people follow up the next day. Some people yeah. follow up the, that very day. They send us right. a giant thing at 10 a.m. and at 4 p.m. They go, have you read my thing yet? No. I haven't honestly read your 130,000 word manuscript since you sent it to me six hours ago. Yeah. Sorry, I haven't. Yeah. Now, let's say you've sent out 25 queries and you've gotten a few requests. You need to follow up with all the Everybody. people that said nothing. And you need to let them know that you have gotten requests for material. Now, let's go to the place where you've gotten the request for material, you've sent it out, and you've got no response. Again, the two-week follow-up. Now, let's say you don't get anything at the two-week follow-up. What do you do then? Follow up again. When? In two weeks. Exactly. Every two weeks. Set your, uh, your phone for two weeks. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. I got a whole like sheet of when everybody gets their follow up. At a certain point, if someone doesn't respond, they are not the person for you because you need someone who's actually going to respond to you. They are giving you a signal that they are not the right person. It's like when you go on you. a date with someone and you think there's a spark right. and they say, I'm going to, I'll call you back real soon. And they don't call you back. Right. Once you find out they're not dead. Yeah then you have to assume they're not the person for you. So let's review the number one thing that you should assume when you hear nothing. No one has looked at your material. No one has looked at your material. And I let me just put a, from a point of view of someone who's lived with an agent, because most of us writers, that's what I come to this. That's our, our partnership here. She's a writer and I've sold books, but she's primarily has come to this from being an agent for 25 years and I've been a writer for 25 years. So as a writer, I had no idea what it was like to be in the lair of the agent or the editor. And it's relentless, it's brutal. It's why post workers go postal because it's it never stops. Yeah. The emails come in all the time while you're asleep, while you're awake. You go to a party, the word gets out, you're an agent, they just flock to you. It's brutal. So. You have to look at it from their point of view as well. You want to make it easy for someone to say yes. Yes, you do. So don't assume that everybody hates your stuff, that you're a loser. That you should eat some worms. That you should eat some worms. No. Assume they haven't read it. Yeah. All right, everybody. See you at the bookstore. Oh, we do have a thing about follow-up too.